Another day in Cape Town. I'm actually, again, heading out of Cape Town to do some photography. I'm not exactly sure the location I'm going to. I literally just threw in Google Maps, lighthouse, because I thought maybe there'd be a cool lighthouse, and found a spot that's about an hour's drive from here. And I haven't seen any good photos of it, but it does look really cool, potentially for a drone photo, or hopefully for some landscape photography. But first, on the way there, I gotta go pick up some camping gear. Okay, that took way longer than I expected, but I just picked up a bunch of camping gear. I'm probably gonna be late for sunset now because of it. I'm gonna be stuck in rush hour, miss sunset, but I'm totally okay with that because I have all the camping gear for the next two and a half months. There's gonna be tons of camping coming on. I guess I'm just gonna chuck it into the trunk and show it to you as I do it. Massive safari tent. That doesn't fit. <laughs> Folding table. Mosquito light, butane for the fires, camping stove, cutlery set, air pump. This is a, a flask, not for booze, for coffee. My flask is much cooler than Jody's flask. Check this out. It's a coffee mug that looks like a lens. Hammer, a mini Nespresso machine. We're so posh. Two air pillows, a water kettle, a double sleeping bag and two chairs. And now I better get to sunset. I see you dancing on the Polaroids. Just wanna have a good time, don't you? It all goes low, low, low. I don't wanna talk before the moment slowly slips away. Mmm, get a little dirty, baby, nothing you ain't got. Okay, so I've made it to Basically, I don't know where I am, just outside of Pringle Bay, I think. It was about an hour and 15 minute drive. I've got about 35 minutes until sunset. Unfortunately, it's gone a little bit overcast. There is some breaks, so maybe I'll get lucky. Uh, the lighthouse is over there. Looks like I have a bit of a walk to get there, so I better get moving. How cool is this bay? It's uh, unreal. Uh, all these locations in Western Cape, around Cape Town, there's so many photo locations, it's unreal. The whale coast itself, which I drove kind of along to get here, there's uh, gotta be a hundred locations there alone. I kind of want to talk quick about why I chose this location and how I chose this location. So I said earlier in the video that I literally just stuck into Google Lighthouses. And I don't know why, I was just kind of like browsing the internet trying to find different things to shoot around Cape Town and I thought, lighthouses. This showed up on the map along with three or four other places and I went into Google Earth and actually checked the satellites to see if there was any sort of foreground around it. And there was! There's all these rocks in the water you can see here. The tide's low, it's receding. But what wasn't clear from the aerial images from the satellite was whether I'd be able to get onto the rocks. It looks like there was water all around it. It looks like that water potentially could be quite rough, although it seems pretty calm right now. And so this is kind of, this is kind of winging it. This is what being a photographer is about to me. It's about trying to find new locations, creating new images, and getting, you know, different styles of shots than people are used to getting. So I'm gonna keep walking, keep exploring, and hopefully find a cool composition at this lighthouse. So the rocks are here, as the satellite images told me. I'm not sure, <laughs> the sea's not as rough as I was hoping it would be. I wanted a little bit more drama. The sky, I think I'm gonna miss the best of it too. The sun's coming through right now, and then it's a little bit overcast on the horizon. So I think I was just late today, and it's partly my fault. It also just took way longer at the camping company than I expected. So, um, 
I guess let's boogie and see what we can come up with anyway. But this location is stunning. And if we don't get photos today, we'll definitely have to come back here at some point. So this is gonna be a fail. I came here at low tide on purpose because I was worried about getting hit with waves here. But without any waves, it's way too calm and there's no foreground. All these rocks, you can see at some point in the day they get hit by waves. Right now, it's just way too calm. So, I don't know, maybe a drone flight? formations are tricky boy yeah I said this was uh, a failed mission and in many ways it was I didn't really get the photo I wanted the situation was totally wrong for the photo I wanted but that drone flight was fun and I think I want to talk really quick to end this episode about drone photography and give kind of maybe my quick tips about drone photography. The first one is, everybody gets a drone, they immediately point straight down at the ground. And that's a cool shot. If you can find textures, if you can find patterns, if you can find layers, it's a cool shot. But for the most part, I think it's a little bit lazy. When you're shooting from a drone, when you're taking pictures from a drone, and mind me as I don't watch you because I'm trying not to fall on my face. <laughs> when you're taking pictures from a drone, you really have to kind of follow the same rules of composition as you would if you're taking normal pictures. And one of the most important parts of my photography, I think, is depth. So when you look at the photos I took today, I took maybe two or three, they all have depth. And what I mean by depth is there's something in the foreground, there's something in the middle ground, and there's something in the background. And if you don't have depth in your photography, be it drone photography or regular landscape photography or even portraits, it can make everything look flat. So whenever I'm out taking pictures and whether it's in the air, whether it's on the ground, whether <laughs> it's underwater, I'm always looking for ways to create depth. And I think that's something to think about in your photos. Think about what's in the foreground, what's in the middle ground, and what's in the background. Because if you don't have a foreground element in your photos, people just don't know how far away things are. There's no sense of dimension to it. So any type of image, create depth. Find leading lines, find anchors, follow the rules of composition. Just because you're in the sky doesn't mean you can get lazy and just point down at the ground and snap away. I'm bailing on location. I really wish I had time to scout a little bit more and explore a little bit more, but I'm heading back. I actually think this is a much faster way to head back. It looks like there's actually a road. I walked all the way around, wasted like a half an hour. I think if I would have taken this road, I would have had more time to find compositions, but it was still fun, still a good shoot. Still a really, really cool location, and I think I'm definitely going to come back here. Okay, I'm going to call today's episode. It was fun. It was good to get out. It was good to get all this camping gear. I'm so excited to get out and explore more of Southern Africa. I don't know if you guys can tell, but whenever I get to South Africa or Southern Africa, I just have this other level of energy. It's just, I feel free. 
When I'm in Southern Africa, I just feel so wild and free and I can't even explain it. It might just be the fact that I'm out in a place like this all by myself or maybe it's something in the air. Or maybe it's something about, maybe it's just, I don't know. I can't explain it, but this is my third or fourth time in the area and I feel the same every time I come here. It's just so special to me. And I get even a little bit emotional because I'm so happy here in Southern Africa and South Africa in Cape Town. <sighs> so good. Anyways, I'm gonna continue with the good vibes, hopefully, and the energy, hopefully. Tomorrow, I think maybe, potentially, I'm gonna go up Lion's Head and shoot sunset up that way if the weather's good. But I guess we'll see you tomorrow, and I hope to see you guys there. Peace.